نحمد و نسلی علی رسول الکریم اما بعد وی شیل بی بگننگ ٹوڈے ود دی ففتھ سیکشن آف صورت الانبیاء اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ولقد آتینا ابراہیم رشده من قبل وکننا به عالمین اس قال لیبیه وقومه ما هذه التماثیل اللتی انتم لها عاکفون قالوا وجدنا آبانا لها عابدین قال لقد کنتم انتم و آباؤکم فی ضلال مبین قالوا وجئتنا بالحق ام انت من اللاعبین صدق اللہ العظیم In the next two sections of this Surah Anbiya we have a mention of so many prophets and also some of the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have been having a list of the names of some of the prophets. We first of all had, and I said that it is a flower pot of the names of the prophets of Allah in Surah Al-Nisa. Again at one position in Surah Al-Imran. But here it is going to be in detail. But please be acquainted with two terms of Quran. In order to awaken and activate within the human being, the dormant consciousness about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Quran either refers to the signs and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At-Tazkir bi'ala illa. Or refers to the historical events, big events, big days. When you know the big chastisement came to the nations to whom the messengers were sent. And that is called At-Tazkir bi-Ayyam Allah. In the same way, there are two terms regarding the accounts of the prophets and Rusul and messengers of Allah in Quran. One is Amba'ur Rusul. Amba is the plural of Naba. Naba is, means a very important news, very big news. Amma yatasalun ala naba al-azim al-lazi hum fiye mukhtalifun. So Abba'u Rusul, under this heading we have the account of those messengers of Allah whose nations were destroyed totally. I have named several times. To begin with, Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam, then Hazrat Hud, Hazrat Saleh, Hazrat Lut, Hazrat Shaib, Hazrat Musa. These six, their accounts are similar. They came to their nations. They called them to worship none except Allah. and accept them as messengers of Allah. The nations as a whole rejected and then as a punishment they were devastated, annihilated. But there is another account of the prophets. You know, their personal virtues, their high moral character, their perseverance for example. So all these things, but not that they came and they demanded that obey me, and have faith in me, and if you don't believe me, you will have chastisement, not in that way. The most glaring example was in Surah to Yusuf. In full 13 sections of that surah, the story of Hazrat Yusuf has been told in detail, but nowhere that matter comes, that if the nation did not accept him, but neither the king of Egypt accepted him as a prophet, nor the nation as a whole of Egypt adopted him, so, but they were not devastated, annihilated, because he never claimed that I am messenger of Allah. So, to be a prophet of Allah is something else, and to be a messenger of Allah is something else. So, here you will find, you know, the mention of some of the prophets and the messengers also. Every messenger is definitely and necessarily a prophet also. Every prophet is not a messenger. But every messenger has to be a prophet first and then actually he is selected and then he is assigned a job to a particular place or to a particular people. So here we find, you know, the mention and this account and some of the prophets and messengers of Allah, but not in the form of a Bao Rusul, but in the way of Qasatun Nabi Yeen. These are the stories of the prophets. And we had given Ibrahim min qabl. Before all these, 
we had given Ibrahim his guidance. Wa kunna bihi alameen, and we knew him absolutely. Is kala le abhi hai? Now we have this mentioned what Hazrat Ibrahim said to his father in Surah Maryam also. Here it is in a second, in a different way. Is kala le abhi hai wa kaumi? Just recall when he said to his father and his nation, his people. What are these images, these idols to which you are devoted? You sit concentrating your attention on them. They said, we found our forefathers doing like this, worshipping them. So we are following them. We don't know why. What's the basis? What's the rationale? We don't know. But we found our forefathers doing like this. Worshipping them. So we are following them. Kala Lakad Kuntum Antum Vabaukum Fizarali Mubin. Now in very strong words, Ibrahim declared, not only you, but also your forefathers. They were in manifest error. They were wrong. Their way and path that they had, that they had taken was wrong. Kalu Ajaytana Bil Hakam Antam in Allahbin. Now they asked him. Have you brought some absolute truths to us? Or you are just joking? Maybe a young man is just joking. No, are you serious? Have you brought to us some absolute truth? Or you are just joking? He said, no, it's no joke. Your Lord is Rabbu Samawati Wallar. The Lord of all the heavens and earth. Alladhi Fatarahunna. Who created them? He is the Lord of the heaven and earth and he is the creator of the heavens and the earth. وَعَنَا عَلَى ذَلِكُمْ مُنَشَاهِدِينَ And I bear a testimony to this before you. That I don't believe in any God except the Lord of the heavens and the earth. Who is also the creator of the heavens and the earth. وَتَلَّهِ لَاكِدُنَّ أَسْنَامَكُمْ بَعْدَ أَنْ تُوَلُّ مُدْبِرِينَ And by God, I'll devise a plot against your idols. When you go out, turning your backs, there was going to be some big worship in the open field. Just you have in India, Durga Puja or Kali Mai Ki Puja, they go out in the field to make that worship. So the whole city was now empty. And Ibrahim said, well, I am not feeling well, I am not going with you. When the whole town was empty, then he entered the, there, you know, worshipping place where the idols were placed, and he broke all of them except one. So, he said, Tallahe, by God, by Allah, I will certainly devise some plot against your idols after you have gone away, turning your backs. Fajalahum jozazan. So, he broke them into pieces, fragments. Illa kabir allahum. Except the biggest idol. لَعَلَّهُمْ إِلَيْهِ يَرْجِعُونَ So that they should refer to him. Ask him, who has done this? قَالُوا When they came back and they were startled, what has happened? Just imagine if such an event takes place in the city of Mathra or the city of Banaras in India, what would happen? قَالُوا مَنْ فَعَلَ هَذَا بِعَلِهَتِنَا Who is the one who has done this to our our Lord, our gods, in Nahula Minas Walimin, verily is a very big culprit. He is an evil doer. Some people said, We we heard a youth. He used to mention them. Yukalu Lahu Ibrahim. And his name is Ibrahim. He is called Ibrahim. He did use to mention them. Kalu Fatu bihi ala ayurin nas. They said, okay, bring him forth before the eyes of the people. So that they also bear witness. And now they asked, before that mob, is there alone? The mob is there. And how angry that mob have, would have been, we can imagine. Oh, Ibrahim, have you done this to our gods? Our idols. Kala bal fa'alahu kabiruhum haza fasaluhum in kanu yantikur. 
He said, this, this bigger one must have done this. He is safe. All the other are broken. So you ask him. He is a witness. He must have seen who has done it. Or might be he has done it. Now if they speak, ask them. Now this is the moment when the truth dawned and then. So they turned to themselves and said, Wakalu, innakum antum zalimun. The truth of the matter is that actually you are the evildoers. What Ibrahim is saying is correct. They can't speak. They can't move. This bigger idol could not have broken all these smaller idols. Impossible. They can't move. They can't talk. And this one cannot tell us who did it. And then we worship him. Then. So the truth dawned on them. But then, Summa nukiswala kulubahim. But then they were made to hang their heads down, saying, Lakad alim yantakur. Oh, Ibrahim, you know, these idols, they can't speak. He said, then you worship besides Allah. These things who can neither give you any profits nor they can do you any harm. How disgusting. How disgusting. And these whom you are worshipping besides Allah. So don't you ponder you, don't you think about it? Don't you understand? They decided and said, Now burn him. And help your gods. Because he has done this insult to the gods. So now he must be burnt alive. In kuntum fa'ileen. If you are going to do something. But when he was thrown in the fire, kulna, we said to the fire, Oh fire, be you a coolness and safety for Ibrahim. Because fire is under the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So any command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fire or water or, or air, these elements of nature have to obey. They had devised a plot against him, but they were the worst losers. Why? Actually, they thought that when Ibrahim will be presented and there will be fire, you know, big, and when he will come to understand that he has been going, he, he would be thrown, then you, he will come to his senses and he will apologize and he will turn back to the beliefs of the community. But Ibrahim, you know, he persevered, although he was thrown. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him. But then Ibrahim made hijrah. He migrated from this country. Actually, he was born in Iraq, in Ur. But now when the nation, you know, they, are, they actually put him in the fire to burn him. Now he had to make hijrah from there. This is the rule with the Messengers of Allah. And we rescued him, Ibrahim, Walutan, and his nephew, Lut, towards the land which we have blessed for the people of the world. And then we bestowed upon him a son, Ishaq, alayhi salatu wa salam, wa a Grandson, Yaqub alayhi salatu wa salam, nafilatan, in addition. Wa kullan jalna salihin. And all of them we made very righteous people. Wa jalna hum aimmatan yahduna bi amrena. And we made them the leaders and guiders of humanity who used to guide people with our command. Wa awhayna ilayhim fail al khirat. And we sent them by revelation. The good, how to do the good deeds by qam salah and establishing of the prayers, by taaz zakah and paying of zakah, wa kanu lana abidin. And they were, yes, they were they worshipping us and they were all obedient to us. Walutan atayna hukman wa ilma. In the same way to Lut also, 
وی گیو دی ججمنٹ اینڈ نالج و نہ جینا ہو من القریت التی کان تامن الخبائس اینڈ وی ریسکیوڈ ہم اینڈ ڈلیورڈ ہم فرام دی سٹی فرام دی ٹاؤن شپ ہوز پیپل انڈلج ان ویری فاؤل اینڈ فلتھی ڈیڈس سوڈمی یو نو دیٹ واز دی بیڈ ڈیڈ آف دیز پیپل آف دی سٹیز آف سدوم اینڈ گمورا ان نہ کانو کامن سو ان کام سو ان فاسٹ ان ویری لی دیور اینڈ ایول پیپل ٹرانسگریسرس واد خلا فی رحمت نا اینڈ دین وی ایڈمٹیڈ ہم لوت ان اور برسی ان نہ من سالحین ویری لی ہی از فرام امنگس دی رائٹیس پیپل و نوح از نادا من قبل اینڈ جسٹ مینشن نوح علیہ سلاۃ وسلام وین ہی ہیڈ کال ٹو اس کالڈ اپون اس فسٹ اجبنا لہو ون اجنا دین وی ریسپونڈیڈ اینڈ وی آنسرڈ ہز کال ہز پریئر اینڈ وی ڈلیورڈ ہم اینڈ ہز فیملی من القرب العظیم فرام دی مائٹی ڈسٹریس و نثر نہ ہو من القوم الزین قصب و بے اینڈ وی ہیلپ ہم اگینسٹ دوز پیپل ہو ایڈ بلائڈ اور ریولیشن ان نہ کانو قوم سو ان دیور آلسو اے ویری وکٹ پیپل اخفاغ رکھنا ہوں بجمائین سو وی ڈراؤنڈ دیم آل ٹوگیدر آل آف دیم و داود اب سلیمان اینڈ ہیئر اگین از اے مینشن آف داؤد اینڈ سلیمان علیہ مسلاۃ وسلام دی سن اینڈ دی فادر داؤد از دی فادر سلیمان از دی سن از یا کمان فی الحرس از نفشت فی ہے نم القوم وین دے ور ججنگ یو نو اے ڈسپیوٹ ریگارڈنگ اے فیلڈ اے فارم where in certain people sheep strayed pastured and destroyed is nafishat fihi ganamul qaum wa kunna li hukmihim shahidin and when they were judging they were giving their judgment we were listening and we were present over there you know a person came with a complaint to daud alayhi salam salam well there was a field which i cultivated and my you know harvest was very but the sheep and goats of this person they entered it during the night and destroyed the whole of the field now what should i do how to recompense what should be the you know fine allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave an instantaneous insight to hazrat sulaiman alayhi salatu wasallam he was young he said now this should be done the flock of the sheep and goats should be given to this person whose field has been destroyed he should keep them eat of them drink their milk and this field should be again cultivated by the person whose sheep are here when the field is ready again harvest is okay then the field will be given to the owner of the field and the flock of the sheep and goats will go back to the person who owned them so this judgment was very much liked ففهم ناها سليمان سو وي ميد سليمان تو انڈرسٹينڈ ات وكل لنا اتينا حكما وعلما اند بوث اوف ذم داوود اند سليمان تو بوث اوف ذم وي هاد گيون دي ججمنٹ اند نالج وسخرنا مع داوود الجبال اند وي هاد سبجكتيد دي ماونتينز فور داوود عليه السلام يسبحنا تو گلوريفاي ذير لورد ود هيم والطير اند نوت اونلي دي ماونتينز also the birds wa kunna fa'ilin and we were the doers wa allamnahu sanata la musil lakum and we taught him the making of the metal coats for you la tuhsinakum min ba'sikum so as to protect you in your fighting falantum shakirun so will you then be grateful wale sulaiman ar riha asifatan and for sulaiman we subjected the wind blowing strongly tajri bi amrihi ila al ardh allati barakna fiha which blew moving at its command towards the land that we had blessed wa kunna bi kulli shay'in alamin and all the things were in our knowledge wa man al shayateen man yahusuna lahu and subjected we subjected the satans the jins for him they used to dive for him in the oceans by amalun amalan dun zalik and did some other works also beside that build very big buildings for him 
وَكُنَّا لَهُمْ حَافِظِينَ And we were watching over them. وَأَيُوبَ And mention Ayyub alayhi salatu wa salam is Nada Rabba who had become very sick, very sick, very sick. Some skin disease, there were boils over the whole of the body, decaying, putrefied. Then you know there were insects moving in those wounds. So his family, his sons and daughters got fed up, left him. In the end, his wife also left him. But then he prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he remained, you know, sabir and shakir. Never complained to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that what you have done to me. Whatever comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay. It's from him, so I accept it. This should be the attitude of a believer. So when he passed this test, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listened to his prayer and granted him his prayer. Vayuba is nada rabbahu. When he called upon his Lord, Anni masani abdur. Oh my Lord, affliction has touched me. Vanta arhamur rahimin. And you are the most merciful of all those who have mercy. You have the maximum mercy. It was the appeal. Fastajabna lahu. So we answered his call. فَكَشَفْنَا مَا بِهِ مِن دُرِّن And we removed the affliction with which he was afflicted. وَآتَيْنَاهُ أَهْلَهُ And we gave back him his family. All the family came back then to him. وَمِسْلَهُمْ مَعَهُمْ Another family might be had then married again and he had another family. وَمِسْلَهُمْ مَعَهُمْ رَحْمَةً مِنْ اِنْدِنَا This was all as a gesture of our mercy. وَذِكْرَ عَلِ الْعَابِدِينَ Or this is admonition for the worshippers. وَإِسْمَعِيلَ وَإِدْرِيسَ وَذَا الْكِفْلِ And Ismail and Idris and Zul Kifl. كُلُّ مِنَ السَّابِرِينَ They were all perseverant people. Now about Zul Kifl, let me tell you that Quran gives this name twice. But rest, no knowledge about it, who he was, where he was born, and which family, lineage, whose lineage, was the progeny of Ibrahim or somebody else, you know nothing from Quran. And we don't have any details in Hadith also. But there is an opinion of some ulama of India that Mahatma Gautama Buddha, Siddhartha Gautama Buddha was Zul Kifl. Because he was born in Kapal Vastu, Kapal Vastu. That, you know, state of the Raja of Kapal was to him as the son. So Kapal in Arabic becomes Kafal. Pay, pay is not there. P or pay is not there. It turns into F or Fa. So Zul Kafal, the person from Kapal, from Kapal was to. And it is just possible. It's just possible, but we can't be sure about it. Kullu mina sabirin. All of them were from the persevering people. And we admitted them and made them enter our mercy. Definitely they were from the righteous. And the man of the fish, he is Jonah or Yunus alayhi salatu was salam. He left his nation before the express permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when a messenger is sent to some land or some people or some community and the community has rejected him. But he cannot leave the community or that place without the express permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is stationed there, he is deputed there, he is appointed there as messenger of Allah, a representative of Allah. But you know he got so much fed up with the people and their arrogance that he left without the permission of Allah. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished him. He was swallowed by a big fish, maybe some whale. And for some time he remained in the stomach of that whale. But then this whale, you know, vomited him out on the shore. And then, you know, he recovered. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his repenting and his tawbah and his apologies. وَزَنُّونِ الزَّحَبَ مُغَاسِبًا And Zannun, Noon means fish. Zannun, the, the man of fish. Recall when he went away enraged. 
and he thought fazanna alla naqdir alayh and he thought we could no we, we could not have was any power over him fanada fi zulumat but then he had to call upon us in the darkness of the stomach of that fish that whale la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu minadh dhalimin there's no god except you o lord o allah glory be to you inni kuntu minadh dhalimin i accept that i was the evil doer i have committed a mistake i did wrong i was wrong in leaving my nation without your express permission and you may recall that you know when the permission was given to the companions by muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to migrate to madina he himself kept back at makkah waiting for the express permission of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hazrat abu bakr siddiq radhiyallahu ta'ala no used to ask him o oh, messenger of allah has the permission come no has the permission come no because he was preparing two camels feeding them and making them strong so that we have to rush then from makkah to madina so all preparation was done by abu bakr but he kept on asking has the permission come and the prophet said no suddenly then at noon you know it's very strange in the arabian society nobody visits others house at noon because they have that talula they did sleep during the noon but at the noon high noon the prophet came to the house of hazrat abu bakr and told him that the permission has come and then they started their journey fastajabna lahu so we answered the prayer of yunus alaihi salam also and najaynahu min alghum and we delivered him from the grief wa kazalika nunjil mu'minin and in the in this manner this is our rule that we deliver the believers wa zakaria and just mentioned zakaria alaihi salatu wassalam his story we have just read in surah maryam that was the full section here is only two ayat wa zakaria is nada rabbahu when he called upon his lord rabbi la tadarni fardan oh my lord don't leave me alone without a son alone if i die my name is gone my dynasty finished and who will look after the mission of the prophetic mission that you have entrusted to me who will take it over la tadarni fardan wa anta khairul warisin you are the best inheritor okay if i don't have an inheritor you are the best inheritor i accept but it would be better if you give me a son fastajabna lahu so we answered his prayer also wa wahabna lahu yahya and we bestowed upon him a son yahya waslahna lahu zawjahu and we cured for him his wife who had been barren up till that time but now she conceived and she bore a son innahum kanu yusariuna fil khairat these people this family as a whole they were the people who were competing each other in good deeds everyone wanted to go forward more forward you know this is the a society of the believers each one of them wants to do more more good not competing in the worldly things well if he has a big house i should have a bigger one no 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 the competition is in good deeds in the service to allah in the service for his deen who does more so that was yusariuna fil khairat wa yad'unana raghban wa rahba and they used to call upon us make dua to us and in both ways raghban having you know that we should uh, give them mercy were rahba and fearing us also so this calling upon allah should have both these things you should have fear also and hope also hope of his forgiveness fear of his punishment wa kanu lana khashiin and they were very humble before us wallati ahsanat farjaha fa rafaqna fiha min ruhina now the last mention is of maryam salam alayha and that girl or woman who had guarded her chastity fully then we bloom in her from our own spirit wa ja'alnaha abnaha wa abnaha ayatan lil alamin and we made her and her son 
سائنس فار دی ورلڈ ان نہاز ہی امت کم امت ہم واحدہ ناؤ ایز اے فرنا از ایڈریسنگ دیز پیپل ابراہیم نو لوت اینڈ یوز یونس اینڈ آل دیز پیپل دی میسنجر اینڈ پروفٹس آف اللہ سبحان و تعالی ان نہاز ہی امت کم امت واحدہ او پروفٹس اینڈ میسنجرس دس از دی کمیونٹی آف یورس اینڈ اٹ از ون کمیونٹی we have made communities separate this is the community or umma of musa this is the community or umma of isa and this is the community and umma of such and such nabi no it's all one you are all one they were all servants of allah subhanahu wa taala they all believed in one god they were all sent by the same allah subhanahu wa taala so in hazihi ummatukum ummatan wahida this community of yours is one community wa ana rabbukum فعبدون and I am your Lord so continue worshipping me now the last section وَتَقَطَّعُوا أَمْرَهُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ كُلُّنْ لَيْنَا رَاجِعُونَ but then they split up their affairs among them and they all will return to us after these people passed away now there were the sects they are the Jews they are the, the Christians and these are such and these are such فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِنَ الصَّالِحَاتِ Now what is the rule with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Whosoever does good deeds, وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنُونَ And the condition is that he should be a believer. فَلَا كُفْرَانَ لِسَعِيهِ So his striving for good deeds will not be rejected or disapproved. وَإِنَّا لَهُ كَاتِبُونَ And we are writing and recording all the good deeds that they are doing. وَحَرَامٌ عَلَىٰ قَرْيَةٍ أَحْلَقْنَاهَا أَنَّهُمْ لَا يَرْجِعُونَ And it is forbidden for the people of a city which is going to be destroyed for which Allah's command is destruction. The final chastisement from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now it is forbidden for the people. They can't return. It can have two meanings. They can't repent. They can't go to Allah's you know, cause and accept it. Because now the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already come. خَتَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ سَمْرِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ أَفْصَارِهِمْ يُشَاوَىٰ Now they cannot come back. Secondly, once destroyed and gone from this world, they cannot return to this world. They are gone, gone by the wind. They cannot come back. حَتَّىٰ إِذَا فُتِحَتْ يَعْجُوجُ وَمَعْجُوجُ This thing with the communities will continue happening till such time that The Gog and Magog are opened, let loose. And you will see them. They will be coming down from every mound. Now who are these Gog and Magog? It's a controversial issue. One thing is sure. Gog and Magog are among the names of the third son of Nuh a.s. Nuh a.s. had three sons. Sam, Ham, Yafis. The progeny of Sam settled because you know where did Nur live? The area which we call today Kurdistan. This is a place where three, four countries meet together. North of Iraq, northwest of Iran, east of Turkey and Syria and then Russia or the USSR, the Caucasia. These countries merge here and this was the place abode of Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam and his people. And there is that hillock, you know, where the ark came to stay after the flood was gone. Now from there, you know, these three sons, when they came out from the ark. So Sam descended southward, Iraq, Sham and the Arabian Peninsula. These nations are called the Semitic nations. Ibrahim was Semitic. He was from Iraq. Syrians, Semitic. Arabians, Semitic. Muhammad is Semitic, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All the uh, prophets of the Old Testament, they are all progeny of Ibrahim, they are Semitic. Number two, Ham. The progeny of Ham spread to the east and to the west, not downward, not to the south. Iran and India. And on the other side, Egypt and Sudan and some East European countries. 
دس از دی پروجنی آف حضرت ہام بٹ دی پروجنی آف حضرت یافس دیٹ کراس اوور دی ماؤنٹینز آف سینٹرل ایشیا اینڈ دین دس اسپریڈ ٹو دی ایسٹ ٹو ویسٹ سو چائنا منگولیا رشیا بیکاز امنگ دیئر سنز از ٹوبال اینڈ ماسک ون نیم از ماسک مے بی ماسکو مائٹ ہیو بین یو نو فاؤنڈیڈ بائی دیٹ سن آف یافس سو دیز آر دی نیشنز آف گاگ اینڈ ماگاگ اینڈ دے ور دی پیپل ٹو فار دیم یو نو دیٹ وال واز ڈائریکٹیڈ بائی ایز وی وی ہیڈ بریڈ ان سورت القحف بائی دل کرنین بٹوین دی کیسپین سی اینڈ دی بلیک سی دس از یو نو اے ویری براڈ پاس تھرو وچ دیز پیپل یوز ٹو کم اینڈ پلنڈر دی نیشنز وچ ور سیٹلڈ ان دی پلینس ان دی ساؤتھ بٹ دین ہی ڈائریکٹیڈ دی وال اوور دیئر and stopped so that they couldn't come and invade. So these are Gog and Magog. And it is in the Ahadith also, in very details, that near the end of this world, <coughs> near Qiyamah, these nations will be let loose. They will bring havoc to this globe, destruction and havoc. And their final confrontation would be with Hazrat Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. And even Hazrat Isa would have to withdraw from them to the mountains. They will be so formidable force, you know. They will drink all the water of the sea. The sea of Galilee will go dry because they will, they will drink each and every drop of it. Now this scene which Quran says, Min kulli hadami yansaloon, you will see these nations coming down, sliding down from all the slopes. This scene has once happened in history in 1962 when there was a war between india and china and you know the reports in the newspapers were waves after waves of the chinese soldiers were descending from the mountains and what humiliation had you know india had to face at that time a very big defeat in numbers they are very great chinese and all this area you know So they are from the Gog and Magog. And they are all the progeny of Hazrat Yafis alayhi salatu wa salam. Hatta iza futihat yajud wa majud. Now this means when that hour will come near of Qiyama or Asara. And these yajud and majud will be let loose. And you will see them coming down from all the slopes. Maybe the slopes of the mountains of the central Asia also. And slopes of Himalayas just as it was in the Nefa. In 1962, slopes of Himalaya, they are coming down. Waves and waves of Chinese soldiers coming. You kill one, the other wave is coming. You, you murder all of them, the third wave is coming. So waves after waves of Chinese soldiers were coming down the slopes of the Himalayans. وَقْتَرَبَ الْوَادُ الْحَقْ And at that time, the promise, time of that promise would come near. وَادُ الْحَقْ But that is of the hour, the doomsday, the day of resurrection. And you will find that at that time that the eyes of the disbelievers would be staring in terror. They will say, Woe to us! We were heedless of this. We were never thought seriously. That this can come to happen. The messengers of Allah foretold. But we never believed in them. Bal kunna zalimeen. We were actually the evil doers. Inna kum wa ma ta'abuduna min dun illahi. Hasamu jahannam. But now, no use. Now you have to be. Now only, not only you, but those whom you have been worshipping. Your idols. They will all be thrown in the fire of hell. And they will become, you know, a sort of uh, wood. Hasabu jahannam. There they will be burnt away. Lau kadaha ulai alihatan. At that time they will think that if these idols were gods, maavarduha, they should not have come to this fire of hell. Wakulun fiya khalidun. But all of them will have to live there forever, for eternity. لَهُمْ فِيهَا زَفِيرٌ وَهُمْ فِيهَا لَا يَسْمَعُونَ They will be sighing there with deep sorrow and grief. But they will be able to listen nothing. 
ان لذین سبقت لہ من الحسن آن دی کنٹری ویریلی دوز فار ہوم اے گڈ ورڈ ہیز آلریڈی پاس فرام اس آرڈینڈ وی ہیو آرڈینڈ آلریڈی الا اے کانہا بادو دے ول کیپٹ اوے فرام دس دس جہنم دس ہیل لا یس مون حسیسا دے ول ناٹ ہیو ٹو ہیئر اونلی ایون اٹس وسپر وہم فی بشتحت انفسوم خالدون اینڈ دے ول ابائڈ فار ایور ان دوز تھنگز وچ دیئر سولز ڈیزائر لا یحزن هم الفضل الاکبر دس گریٹ ٹیرر شیل ناٹ گریو دیم اف زلزلہ زلزلہ تو ساعہ دی نیکسٹ سورہ از گوئنگ ٹو بگن ویری سون اینڈ دی فرسٹ ورڈ از ان ان زلزلہ تا ساعہ تا شیع العظیم دی ارتھ پیک ایٹ دی ٹائم اف دی ڈومز دے ووڈ بی ای ویری گریٹ ایونٹ بٹ دیس پیپل اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی ویل سیو دیم ویل سیو دیم دی گریٹ ٹیرر شیل ناٹ گریو دیم لا یحزن هم الفضل اکبر وتتلقاهم الملائکه and malaika the angels will come and greet them haza yawmukum allazi kuntum tu'adun now this day has come which was promised to you that is now you will enter paradise yawma natwi sama ka tayy sijil lil kutub just imagine the day the dooms day when we shall roll up when we shall roll up all the heavens just as the rolling of a scroll for writing you know in the ancient days books were not bound like this they used to be in scrolls one paper you have written now paste another one and you just roll it and now second you are rolling rolling and rolling on writing and rolling so these are called the scrolls now today we don't have scrolls to <laughs> we have books bound books leaves and bound books but the simile here is yawma natwi sama ka tayy sijil lil kutub the day when we shall roll up heaven like the rolling up of a scroll for writing kama badana awwala khalqin uiduhu as we have we had originated them in the first creation we shall restore it wadan alaina this is a promise binding on us inna kunna faileen and we shall definitely do it do it now here we can understand there is the theory of expanding universe The universe is expanding, 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 going on. But then there is a theory. The time will come when expansion will start, and inward rolling, reverse rolling will start, and that inward rolling might be the whole universe again comes to one spot, just as the galaxies have come to one holes, which we call the black holes, you know, in the space, black holes. there used to be some very big galaxy over here it collapsed and now there is only a hole very dreadly hole everything passing by that goes there and vanishes so in the same way this whole universe might become again you know it started from one point the big bang and big bang it started expanding and expanding and expanding but a time will come when it will roll back and it will again come to the starting point kama badana awwala khalqin wa'idu as we had originated them in the first creation we shall make them return to the same wa laqad katamna fi zubur min ba'd az-zikr and we had written it down in zabur in psalms after the admonition anna al-arda yarisuha ibadi as-salihun that the earth will inherit the land my righteous servants will inherit the land the earth now it has it can have two means meanings number one that the the earth here the land here which is mentioned is the land of paradise the land of paradise will be inherited by people who have done good deeds the believers another thing can mean that before the end of this world a time will come that the whole this world will be ruled by the people who are righteous who are servants of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to this effect we have a clear prophecy of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that before the end of this world islam will dominate the whole of the globe la yaqa ala zahri al-ard bayt wa barin wala badrin illa adkhalahu allah kalimat al-islam in hadith in musnad ahmad ibn hanbal from miqdad ibn aswad radhiyallahu an that not a single house will remain made of bricks and clay and not a single tent will remain of the nomads 
in which Allah will not make the deen of Allah, Islam, enter. This will happen. So a global domination of the deen of Allah. This is Khilafah ala min hajin nabuwa. As the Prophet has said, this period will come again. The Khilafah ala min hajin nabuwa, just after the death of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that was the Khilafah rashida, we know it. The caliphate, pious caliphate. The same system will again be established on this earth. So that, this ayah can mean that also. وَلَقَدْ كَتَمْدَا فِي الزَّبُورِ مِنْ بَعْدِ الزِّكْرِ أَنَّ الْأَرْضَ يَرِسْوَ عَيْبَادِيَ السَّالِهُونَ We had already written in Zabur, in Psalms, after the admonition, that this land will be inherited by our righteous servants. Either before the end of this world, there is a global domination of the Muslim Ummah and Islam established as a deen, as a social order over the whole of the world. Or after the end of this world, the land of paradise will be inherited by our righteous servants. In the and in this is surely a message for the worshippers who worship us. And we have not sent you, O Muhammad, but a mercy for all the nations of the world. This is again a hint. Because if he has been sent for the whole of the world, now his deen, which he brought with him, must be dominant over the whole of the world. He has, he was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the, this deen of haq in order to make it supreme. So when he has been sent for the whole of humanity and for all the world, so then the deen of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that is deenul haq, that is deenullah, deenullah and deenul Muhammad the same, that will dominate the whole of the globe. قُلْ إِنَّمَا يُحَا إِلَيَّ أَنَّمَا إِلَاهُكُمْ إِلَاهُمْ وَاحِدٍ Tell them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is being revealed to me, this wahi has come to me, that your Lord is only one God. فَعَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ So do you surrender yourself to him or not? فَإِنْ تَوَلَّوْا if they turn their faces, فَقُلْ آزَنْتُكُمْ عَلَىٰ سَوَا So proclaim that I have conveyed to you the message, alike, all alike. I have spoken to the rich, to the poor. I have spoken to the high, to the low. I have preached in your streets. I have knocked at your doors. I have talked to you in privately. I have addressed you in public. I have done whatever I could do. Adan tukum ala sawa. Wa in adri ya qareebun ba'idun ma tu'adu. Now this I don't know. Whether the chastisement that is promised to you has come near or it is a bit far off. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a further respite. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe that chastisement has come to your doorsteps. I don't know. This, is, this knowledge is with Allah. إِنَّهُ يَعْلَمُ الْجَهْرَ مِنَ الْقَوْلِ He, Allah, knows whatever is spoken aloud. وَيَعْلَمُ مَا تَكْتُمُونَ And He knows what you can see in your hearts. He knows everything. وَإِنْ أَدْرِي لَا لَهُ فَأَبْنُ تَلَّقُمْ And I don't know, I can't say. Maybe it is going to be another test for you. وَمَتَعُونِ الْآحِينَ Or maybe an enjoyment, a respite for some time. قَالَ رَبِّحْكُمْ بِالْحَقِّ And finally the Prophet now he is calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbihkum bil haq. Oh my Lord, now give the judgment, final judgment with truth. These words depict the psychological position of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was also now fed up. I have taken much pains. I have spent 10, 11 years. A small city. And I have been preaching here for 10, 10, 11, 12 long years. So now, oh Lord, your judgment should come. قَالَ رَبِّحْكُمْ بِالْحَقِّ Oh my Lord, now give the final judgment with truth. بَرَبُّنَ الرَّحْمَانُ الْمُسْتَعَانُ عَلَىٰ مَا تَصِفُونَ And our Lord is Rahman, the compassionate one. And only His help can be sought on those things which you are describing about Him. Now the next surah, Surah Al-Hajj. Actually these three surahs after, as I told you before, 
فرام سورہ یونس ٹو دس سورت لمبیا دیز آر ٹویلو سوراز اینڈ سب ڈیوائڈیڈ ان ٹو فور سب گروپس آف تھری سوراز سورہ یونس سورہ ہوت سورہ یوسف ون سب گروپ سورہ راد سورہ ابراہیم سورہ ہجم سیکنڈ سب گروپ سورت النحل سورت بنی اسرائیل سورت القحف تھرڈ گروپ سورت مریم سورت تاہا سورت لمبیا فورتھ گروپ اینڈ ناؤ الحج ام المومنون دے آر اے پیئر بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم یا یو الناس اتقوا ربکم او مین کائنڈ ہیو فیئر اف یور لارڈ ان زلزلت الساعت شیء عظیم ویرلی انڈیڈ دی ارتھ کویک اف دیٹ آور الساع از گوئنگ ٹو بی اے مائٹی تھنگ You know, this whole solar system will be disturbed. As we have in Surah Qiyamah, this moon will plunge into sun. They will come together. What will happen, you know? So you can't imagine. In the Zaldalat Asaat Shayu Naseem, all these mountains turned into dust, moving, just like clouds, or just like cotton, or wool. All these mountains, the Himalayas, everything. What will be happening at that time? Nobody can imagine. In the zalzalat asaat shayun azim. When that appointed hour comes, the shaking of that time would be very mighty, very great thing. Yawm atarawna, the day when you will see it, tazhalu kullu murziyatin amma arzaat. Every suckling mother would just forget the baby. Now this is the most affectionate relationship, mother and the baby. In the human beings as well as animals. But no, everybody would be caring for him and her alone. Even the suckling mothers will just forget their babies. And all the pregnant females will lay down their pregnancy, their burden. And you will see people as if they are drunk. But they are not drunk. وَلَكِنَّ عَذَابَ اللَّهِ شَدِيدٌ But the chastisement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very severe. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يُجَادِلُ فِي اللَّهِ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ وَيَتَّبِعُ كُلَّ شَيْطَانِ مَرِيدٌ And there are among people who <coughs> dispute concerning Allah. Although he has no knowledge, <coughs> he is arguing. But he has no knowledge whatsoever. Without having any knowledge. And he follows all the rebellious satans. Yani, as if he is a very big, you know, scholar and he is arguing for, against Allah, against Deen. But if you look to his character, he is a friend of Satan. He is following the ways of Satan. So these are the people, the scholars, the so-called, you know, intelligence of today. وَيَتَّبِعُ كُلَّ شَيْطَانِ مَرِيدٌ كُتِبَ عَلَيْهِ It has been prescribed on him. That is the Satan. What has been prescribed for the Satan? مَنْ تَوَلَّاهُ Whosoever will become a friend of him. فَإِنَّهُ يُضِلُّهُ He will definitely lead him astray. وَيَهْدِيهِ إِلَى عَذَابِ السَّعِيرِ And he will guide him to the chastisement of the burning fire. Ya ayuhan nas, O people, O mankind, in kuntum fi rabi min al-baas. If you have any doubts about resurrection, how can we be resurrected? How can we be made alive again when we shall become bones and dust and nothing else? You have doubts? Now you look to your creation, your own creation. Fa inna khalakna kum min turab. You know, we created you out of clay. Summa min nutfa. Then the second stage of your creation was the sperm drop, summa min alaqa. After that, the third stage, a hanging piece from the wall of the womb of the mother, like a leeches, summa min muzra. Then a lump of flesh, mukhallaqatin wa ghaira mukhallaqatin, formed and unformed, le nubayyina lakum, so that we tell you through which stages you have come here in this world. وَنُقِرُوا فِي الْرَحَامِ مَا نَشَاءَ 
and we settle in the wombs of the mothers, whatever we like, a male child or female child. We keep it there till a fixed period. Then we take you out as babies. And then you reach and attain your puberty and maturity. And from amongst you are those also who die, die young. And you, some of you are returned to the most senile age. So that they, he doesn't know anything after the knowledge he had. In the beginning he had no knowledge. But then he had the, all the knowledge. He a- attained, you know, education. And he was a PhD and this and that. But then when he is now 100 years old, now all knowledge gone. Senility has overtaken. What happened to Reagan? He was recognizing only his wife and none else, a person who was ruling this world at a time. But this happened. So actually, And you see the land, you know, lying low. But when we send down water on it, rain comes. It stirs and swells. And then it grows every kind of lovely growth. So you have two observations. Your own creation from dust, then sperm drop, then alaka, then musga, all these stages. Then you come out as a baby. Then you are young, fully adult. In the same way, a land lying barren, nothing, no life, no signs of life whatsoever. Rain comes and there is life. You see, there is vegetation. So, the God that is doing all this, can't he create you again? This is the argument which comes in Quran many times. Zalika bi this is so because Allah is the one who is the truth, the absolute truth. And that he will revive the dead. And that he is powerful over everything. And that appointed hour will come. There is no doubt about it. And Allah will definitely, surely raise them who are in the graves. Again repeating the same. But there are people who go on disputing, arguing about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can he do it? Although they have no knowledge, they have no guidance, they don't have any book with them. No divine, no divine book. He bends his side with arrogance so that he takes people away from the way of Allah, prevents them from the way of Allah. For them in this world is also humiliation. And on the day of judgment, on the day of resurrection, we shall make them taste the chastisement of fire, burning fire. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم